Hello, I'm the Original Cartographer, and this is the second video in a series on our ally Beckett, doing the quest on Eagle Flies Free, that's the overall quest. In this case, we're going to be starting out with a quest, Item Retrieval. Now, if uh, you missed it last time, Beckett is a former raider who was captured by the Blood Eagles. He's planning to bring the Blood Eagles down by killing off their leadership. In the last video, we helped out his ally Sage, uh, and helped him to find a diary belonging to a man that he had ripped off, and then also helping, us, helping that same guy find a key. Uh-oh. And, uh, that didn't sound good. We happened to recover the diary of a man named Edwin, who he used to work for, and also to recover a key to that man's arsenal and kill the person who took the, uh, the key. That was, uh, Bronx, I believe. Uh, but in this case, we're going after the supply of buff out that belongs to the Blood Eagles, so let's take a look at the map. Well, quest, I mean. Let's see. Supply and demand takes us to... Hawk's Refuge. Okay. We'll head there now. Hawk's Refuge was originally controlled by Brianna Hawk, who was a refugee that fled uh, Harbor's Ferry when the Scorch Beast attack took place. She led a group of people here with her and then attempted to uh, get help from the uh, Sunday Brothers, who had a uh, cabin not far from here. Uh, pretty awful story as to uh, what happened uh, when... Uh, they came in contact with each other. I've put a, made a lore video on it. I'll uh, put a link to it at the end of this video. This cave is filled with feral ghouls. Uh, outside, it's typically insects or, uh, like we just saw, uh, wild dogs. But uh, plenty of can traps in here if you're looking for lead and uh, steel. Okay. Let's see. Oh, almost. There we go. Yeah, also a Wendigo in here. Let's uh, just avoid the Wendigo. And take the buff out supply. Crazy that they were uh, hiding their buff out in a cave with a Wendigo in it. I mean, I guess it means that there, no one's going to be coming after your buff out. But uh, at the same time, how are you going to get your buff out? Okay, let's uh, bring this back to Beckett. And why am I walking when I can fast travel? All right, in the last video, we missed out on an option to flirt with Beckett. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Uh, the conversation so options really seem to be very different with Beckett than they were uh, with Commander Daguerre. As in, uh, it seems like with Commander Daguerre, you could talk to her about a lot of stuff and then move on. Uh, in Beckett's case, it's almost like anything you talk to him about could potentially be the trigger to move on to the next part of the conversation. Uh, but let's talk to him. Without this buff out, the Blood Eagles won't be able to fill their ranks. <laughs> oh, we're really doing it! I kind of wish you'd come with me. Look, that buff out you stole? And he forced that shit into my body over and over until I couldn't even see straight. That, and they tortured me. Look, I'm just... I'm not ready to pull the trigger. Not yet. Anyway, it's time to move on to the big score. I want you to kill the first of the gang's three leaders. The Blood. You know, this is the one who finds the most vulnerable and brings them to the cave. Interesting. There's actually a little bit more depth to his character than I think we kind of got originally. Uh, it's too bad my charisma is so low on this character. Um, let me see if I got anything to fix that. Oh, that completes a quest and gives us an item reward of four stem packs, 12, 5, 5, 6 rounds of Tesla rifle, and six uh, fusion cores. I guess that's supply and demand. It's weird that it kind of flashed on the screen and then went away and came back. Um, I guess we have to talk to him again before he gives us another quest. <laughs> uh, but let's uh, see if we've got anything charisma related here. Okay, well, my charisma's already at three on this character. We'll just go with a new River Red Ale. Although that's dropping my in intelligence even more than Marsupial's doing for me. I can tell this is personal for you. I'll take care of it, Beckett. Yeah, it is. I can't lie. This rips me up inside. I'm... terrified. It feels like... Uh... My own blood is working against me. I feel like I'm forced to be uh, docile here. Oh, this is so embarrassing, upsetting. But 
thank you. I, uh, I need your help more than you realize. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, I think we just lost some more. That's on me. I, I kind of thought that might have put us through to the next uh, bit of dialogue. Let's see if we can do that again. And that starts the quest, spilling blood to go kill the blood. You know that? Let's see if we can salvage this conversation. You need anything before you head back out? Well, at least we can uh, talk to him about the stuff that we uh, just missed out on. What's the news from Edwin's gang? Well, I gave Ronnie the key and told her the news about Bronx. Well, she's thrilled, by the way, so hopefully we'll hear some news. Soon. What are you going to do with the buff out? I'm going to dig a hole somewhere. Deep. Then bury it. Hopefully it'll sink into the soil and that's it. It's a temporary measure, but necessary. Oh, well, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to use it, if that's what you're thinking. No, no, no. I've worked way too hard to escape that crap. Never again. So are the Blood Eagles just some other cult? <laughs> not at all. I mean, they were just raiders who were destroyed by heavy chem addiction. But then, uh, you know, it wasn't just that. You know, some of them became incredibly violent and thoroughly enraged. I mean, before they were just a band of maniacs, and, and it was bad, yeah. But this, this is, this is new. This is, this is terrible. Once the Blood Eagles capture someone, what did they do with them? Well, they're sent to the cave for processing. Here. I got this holotape off one of the Eagles a while back. You know, it's sickening how little they value a human life, even for a raider. Convert report status. Ten new recruits picked up by the Blood. It was actually twenty, boss, wasn't it? We only count the survivors dead. Oh, my official Blood Eagle name is now the Horn. Really? Fine. We only count the survivors, Horn. No, like the Horn, not Horn. You know, like the Claw, the Blood. You have to earn a the around here, Horn. But, but. Fine. What's your name? I'll use that one in honor of you. I am literally going to murder you. But, but, uh, okay, how about the bloodiest eagle of them all? Okay, bloodiest eagle. Please wait in the hallway while I finish the report. Guard the door. Kill any intruders. I can do I think we need to ditch the whole naming thing. It's getting out of hand. I will also need a new assistant. Ten survived the chems with no issue. Nine had reactions and were disposed of. One has been sent to see the eye. Oh, right. Better send someone to clean up the mess after their session is complete. All right. I'll just go with I'm parched, Beckett. One beverage coming right up. Beckett, I have some questions for you about the current job. Spill it, friend. Okay, that's the same options. One beverage coming right up. I just want to talk. Of course. What's on your mind? How did you fall in with the Blood Eagles? When I was with Edwin's gang, I thought I was king shit. I was popular with the gang. I was rolling in caps. I was untouchable. Then I got hooked on the cams. Psycho, buff out, jet. You name it, I probably used it. And at that point, I was a marked man. See, Blood Eagles were the ones seeding the gangs with the chems. That's how they recruit. And they get you hooked, then they pounce. And one morning I woke up, mind totally obliterated. Flying Blood Eagle colors, and that was all it took. I was their property now. Let's talk about your past. 
What do you want to know? Tell me about your older gangs. Ancient history, huh? Yeah, fair enough. Well, let's see. Okay, first, I was an independent. Huh? Just trying to steal enough to keep me afloat. Uh, the problem was all the competition. The gangs. Uh, once I realized it was smarter to join them, I ran with Hopkins hooligans. And that went pretty well, actually, until Hopkins got himself killed. Then I ran with Edwin's gang for a little while until uh, the Blood Eagles came calling. And they uh, recruited me into their gang. And the rest, as they say, is history. Never do anything you regret? <laughs> you serious? I could give you a list. If you're asking me to pick something in particular, it would have to be the dirt I shoveled for the Eagles. You have to understand, I was drugged out of my mind. And the things I did, I never would have done for any of the other gangs. I have so much blood on my hands. I don't know if I'll ever be able to wash it all away. Let's, uh... Let's just talk about something else, okay? Tell me more about your time in Edwin's gang. Ah, Edwin's gang. Good booze, good people, and good memories. Edwin himself was a little crazy. I mean, not blood eagles crazy, but he never made us do anything we didn't want to do. We were just a bunch of gangers, looking for loot, getting drunk, and <laughs> singing like a bunch of idiots through all hours of the night. Uh, if it wasn't for my stupid chem addiction and falling in with the Eagles, I'm pretty sure I'd still be with his gang today. What was your life before the gangs? I uh, never really knew my mom. and uh, My dad died when I was pretty young. So I ended up having to take care of my brother, Frankie. Now we had to steal food and drink to keep from starving. And it turns out we were pretty darn good at it, so we... Uh, Started our own little crime wave. <laughs> nah, we never did anything serious, though. Uh, I drew the line at stealing. Frankie was a bit trigger happy. And, well, that worried me. Uh, when I was recruited by the hooligans, I made Frankie stay at home. I wouldn't let him join. He always hated me for that. That's enough for now. Ah, uh, no problem. Can I do anything else for you? I need something to drink. You got it. It's funny that the only way to end the conversation is to here. start a trade with him. Okay, uh, let's see where we have to go. Kill the blood. Okay, that's taking us out here to Bloody Franks in Berkeley Springs. Oh, overloaded. I'll take care of that, and then we'll go take care of the blood. It's just about time to eat. Okay, off to Berkeley Springs. Live and let live. Okay, here we are. Uh, I gotta do a lore video on Berkeley Springs at some point. It's an interesting little town. I've uh, done a little bit of the research on the history of it. There's something called the uh, George Washington's Bathtub here, which <laughs> is interesting. Uh, along with that, there's the uh, Berkeley Springs Castle. But uh, again, we'll get to that in an upcoming lore video at some point. Uh, this town is generally overrun with Scorched. Uh, there are also usually super mutants. Uh, it's a location of an enclave uh, event when you're trying to level up to become a general. Uh, the pharmacy here was a site of uh, some pretty awful stuff just post-war. Basically, they were running a clinic to try to keep people alive, and uh, that's when they got hit by proto-raiders. They, uh, there's interesting stuff about that, though. They still got uh, supplies delivered from the government at that point in time via Vertibird, and there were some... It's interesting. There were some soldiers helping to guard the clinic until the uh, raiders came by. But anyway, uh, we're going to Bloody Franks, and uh, it's actually a new location that they've added. Uh, the good news, though, is that I have a pre-Wastelanders view of it, and I will uh, insert that when we get closer so you can have a better um, comparison as to before and after. Okay, I'm going to put that in here. Okay. 
So it looks like it's an old espresso shop there. Still hear the screams. Oh yeah, I'm wearing the uh, Chinese stealth armor. Let's see. <laughs> I really like the Chinese stealth armor with the fixer. Unfortunately, you all can't really see what I'm aiming at, nor can I, so I'm going to go to using something that has a, a, a scope, and we'll use that when we need to. But we're not really here to kill other than the blood, so we'll take care of him and see if we can't leave the rest of them alone. Who knows, maybe they'll have some sort of uh, epiphany like uh, Beckett has had. And we'll come to their senses and try to leave. Okay, let's see. Where is the blood? Is it pointing to us to anything in particular? No, it's just saying this area. Is that? No? What about you? No. Spotter. No? I hate my thoughts. I hate my thoughts. I hate my thoughts. Predator. Ooh, there's a terminal. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to die. Something's close. Something is close, you're right. It's too bad that these people have to die because I've gotta check that terminal entry. Okay, so we got Frank the Butcher. And I just saw somebody else named. Jesse the Hook. Okay. Well, it looks like we've at least cleared this little area. Let's see if there is uh, anything special on these two. Chef Sharp Rollington. So it seems the blood is upstairs here. So we'll get to him in just a moment. But let's see about uh, Jesse the Hook. Well, we don't want that. He's got the Power Fist. Interesting. Some fuel, but not a flamer. Is there anything else? Chef hat. That's a pretty common item. Let's see. I well, so fucking bored. Where'd I put those cameras? So I guess uh, <laughs> the blood himself is not immune to the chems. He not only pushes them on people, but uses them himself. Here he is. Okay. 44 rounds and a stim pack and a short western revolver. Oh, was it a note? Larry's Low Country Marlin Boil. Back before the bombs dropped, me old mama used to boil up some local catch with potatoes and corn and, and more than enough spices. This one's for you, mama. Marlin meat, best if it just stopped moving. Throw <laughs> some shell for flavor. Corn cobs chopped in half, plenty of spices seasoned to your heart's desire. You can cook this up in whatever water you get your hands on. Get a good fire going and a pot of that water rolling on top. Now if the Marlurk legs twitch a bit, you got yourself something fresh. Don't go easy on the spices. We want a generous handful so that it seasons the meat. Okay. That's interesting. It's uh, one of the rare times we've actually gotten a recipe that uh, reads like a recipe and not just a consumable. Desk fan. Some uh, junk here in the location's uh, trunk. Let's see. There was also that terminal. I definitely want to go check that out. I just want to make sure we don't miss anything else up here. Okay. Nothing yet. Oh yeah, we're just up here. Yeah, goosebumps. Something's near. We'll keep crouching. Okay. Terminal back in here that we missed before. Cook's terminal. Okay, Frank's log and Jesse's log. Frank's log, Frank one. That Jessie sure thinks she's smart, but she ain't smart like Frank is. No, she ain't. This little hussy put something in my tasting bowl to make me sick. Then when dinner time rolls around, she's serving Jessie's low country marlock boil. Well, okay then, Jessie. Frank, too. That new guy? Boy, can he cook. We did tell him he'd be off dishwashing duty soon, so I feel kind of bad leading him on like this, but damn is he a good source of material. Tried some radstack soup he stewed the other night. Warm, hearty, and delicious. Folks around here are going to wonder how I keep doing it before long. Okay, and Jesse's log. Jesse won. Decided to start this new guy who wants to work as a cook here one day. Shows potential for sure. Well, what do you know? Since we brought him on last week, Frank sure does seem to have an endless supply of new recipes. Sure is strange behavior, serving the dishwasher's food. 
Jesse, too. Frank has made a fuss over serving what we made for dinner last night. Claims I poisoned him so I could brag about the food he made. That guy will go on about anything. One time, we made something a little spicy and he was complaining about his tummy well into the next morning. And Jesse, three. Well, Frank, tonight's your night, brother. Oh, yeah, everyone's gonna know who served up dinner tonight. See, I have no idea what he was rambling on about the other day, but tonight, Chef Frank is gonna serve up something mighty tasty and mighty toxic. This whole damn compound is gonna be puking their guts up. It'll be back to dishes for you, sir. Okay. Strange people. Let's <laughs> take a look around. Ah, uh, another note? Maybe a recipe? Frank's fine Radstag Redemption. I got a bone to pick after the other night's supper. Whipped this up the other day and ain't no one gonna question my cook no more. Get as much radstag meat as you can get your hands on and cut into nice fat chunks. Just enough potatoes to thicken the gravy. They bring a richness you wouldn't believe. A splash of bourbon here and there while you're cooking won't hurt. Some foul water ties this together, tenderizes the stag meat, and breaks it all down. I find the smokiness of an open flame works wonders with a delicious stag meat in the stew. Whatever bourbon you are going to drink is going to help our flavors mix and mingle till they cook them into something that will keep your belly warm and make your toes tingle. Okay. Let's uh, see what else there is here. I keep forgetting there are guys here. Let's see. Anything else? We got a cooler. Some rad stag meat. Are those... Ugh. Human heads. Uh, another recipe, it looks like. Hunter's head cheese. The other day, while well, wandering through Appalachia, I was fondly reminded of a dish my Grammy used to make when I was a youth. I've been experimenting with what I could find around here to replicate this dish. Any red meat will do, but we're looking for as much facial tissue as we can find. Salt, spices, and a broth to pull it together. Take half your meat, grind it to a pulp, then cube the rest, leaving any tasty gelatinous bits like a good piece of ear or nose. Mix that with your salt, spices, and water and bake the mixture in a stag skull to impart flavor. For a real treat, I like to find one of those foundation folks, lop her head off and scoop the insides out, just like my sweet old granny used to make. Good lord. So were they cannibals in addition to everything else? Oh man. I guess those two heads back there are potentially the heads of... Uh, Settlers from Foundation. Got some ammo in the ammo box here. Any more creepy recipes? Let's see. I mean, I kind of doubt we're on the periphery of where we'd find recipes, but there might be some other sleeping area or something. No, it looks like this is probably a gate to the area. And I think they probably lived entirely on the rooftops. At least that's the way it's looking. Yeah, I don't think they we're living in these buildings. Okay, let's head back to Beckett. Okay. You really saved me. I just can't believe you did it. I just... I feel... lighter. I really... Ronnie came by while you were away. She said Edwin can't even consider helping us at all because he's in a state of, uh... despair. Uh, I know this sounds uh, petty compared to what you've already done, but well, his uh, his dog is missing. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get through these without triggering the forward movement. Why don't we just kill Edwin so Ronnie can take his place? Uh, first of all, that's evil. You know, <laughs> like evil. Edwin is a good guy. I mean, he's a little mushy in places, but he's fine. Secondly, that's Ronnie's uncle. She actually loves him. Do you think she'd be happy with that? Come on. Jeez. Now, thirdly, Edwin has a ton of health issues. I'm surprised he's still around. We've been helping Ronnie this whole time. You know what I mean? Ah. Okay, so... He's the, uh, figurehead. A lost dog? Seriously? Look, I know, I know. It's ridiculous. But look, to finish off the Blood Eagles, we're gonna need Edwin's help, so let's play ball, okay? I gotta wait here for Sage, so do me this favor, please. To some people, a dog is an important member of the family. Yeah, those people are called weirdos. <laughs> I don't care if Edwin wants to marry his dog, right? Puts his gang on our side, we all win. 
Just give me the details, and I'll grab the dog. Thanks, friend. Well, I know it's silly, but, uh, hey. It means something to Edwin, so... What can we do? Hey, we can actually now flirt with him. We missed the last opportunity. I wanted you to know that I'm glad we've been getting along so well. I hope you feel the same way. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be honest. I've never been close. I mean, not in the way you're talking about with anyone before. It's kind of new to me. Wait, we are talking about what I think you're talking about, right? You know what? Maybe I'll just stop talking before I say something stupider. Huh? <laughs> Deal? Aren't the Blood Eagles pissed at us now? They have no idea who you are. I'm sure they're taking out revenge on literally every single vault dweller they see right now. Others too, maybe. I know it sounds like we made things worse, but we have to finish it. We have to cut off the other two heads. And then they're just idiots again. What else can we do to the Crypt of the Blood Eagles? Well, I'm not sure yet. But I'm hoping some of my contacts will give me an idea while you're grabbing the... Uh, dog. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'll find that dog. See ya. I think its name is Noodles. I... I'm 60% sure of that. Anyway. Uh, good luck. Oh, it's nice to have company. And not the... You know, in a gang. Okay. Uh, so for completing Spilling Blood, we got stem packs, 45 rounds, heavy combat, armor, leg, fusion core, and something else. And uh, are starting the quest Pet Peeve to go rescue Noodles. Uh, now, it's weird that it's putting dog in quotes. Uh, it said Johnson's Acre was added to the list of locations, which is... Wow, oh, that's now a uh, cultist location. I didn't realize that. Well, we've been there before for a uh, surveil video, but that is so far from anything that we've been near on this character. So, uh, I'm gonna start at these Spruce Knob channels, I guess? Because there's a big old cliff right here. At least, I think there is. There definitely is for the rest of the Savage Divide, so I'm gonna actually assume that it's probably easier to get there from here. Uh, we'll start there and head our way down there. Okay, so we gotta head off to the southeast. It's gonna be a long walk, so I'll kinda bring you back in and out every once in a while. There are floaters there, I'm gonna try to avoid them as best as possible. Seem to have seen me for a second, but we're clear of them now. Well, that's got a, quite a view here. I uh, don't think we can quite see it yet. And there's another one of those weird optical things off in the distance. I have no idea what that is. Anyway, though, let's keep on moving. I wonder if I still have goat legs. <laughs> Perching some sort of lake or pond. More floaters. This area is strangely infested with floaters. Wonder where we are. Lake Eloise. Definitely a lot of floaters over there. I'm going to go around the lake. Little uh, rope bridge here that we can take across this channel. Whoa. More floaters. Uh, this way. <laughs> well, we're getting close enough to Jonathan's Acre that the, uh, the icon is actually showing up on the compass now. Less than 100 meters to go. Oh, uh, yep, Mothman cultists. Oh, I hope they haven't, uh, destroyed the human catapults that <laughs> the raiders installed at the top of Jonathan's Acre. Those are one of my favorite things about this site. Well, let's face it, those are my favorite things about this site. Okay, now where is Noodles? Cultist Awoken over there. Where is Noodles? Let's check out the, uh, the house. Holy Mothman, watch over us in our time of trial. No. Okay. We'll check behind the house, but uh, if Noodles isn't there, we'll... Oh, actually, no, it's pointing us in this direction. So I'm willing to bet uh, Noodles is at the top of this pinnacle. Oh, great man. 
Look upon your subjects with mercy. Let's check up the top of this ramp. Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to kill some cultists in order to get Noodles out of here. Assuming Noodles is both a dog and alive. Let's check this. Okay, plasma cores and some other stuff. Okay, let's see. Yeah, these are my favorite things about this site. <laughs> Perfect little traps there rigged up for that. Okay. Hmm. Well, I really figured it would be up here at the top of the pinnacle, but I guess not. Where else around here would this thing be? Oh! Noodles is a mole rat. <laughs> Noodles has been set free. Okay, I guess we can uh, head back to Beckett now. That was a little ridiculous. Uh, let's get back there. Okay. Let's see what he has to say. You've got a great place here. Thanks. So when Ronnie said dog, what she meant was a freaking mole rat? <laughs> Seriously. Well, I'm sure it'll uh, find its way home, Dad, when now that you've freed it. But in the meantime, I've heard the Blood Eagles have recruited a mechanic named Star. And they plan to have her help take over a radio station. We can't let that happen. Man, really serious downside to Marsupial. I love the jumping, but I set my intelligence to 12 for a reason. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get this. Oh, jeez. I keep forgetting that it does this. Okay, one. purified water. Auto... Automatic assault rifle and some ammunition. That completes the quest, Pet Peeve. And uh, we're going to have to talk to him again to get a new quest. But uh, let's see if what I've got here. i got some berry mintats. That should do it. If they get the radio working, we could drastically reduce their signal-to-noise ratio with a burst jammer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure everything you just said made perfect sense to you, but uh, all I heard was blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> how about you just stick the burst jam in a bullet into Star's skull? Hmm? That should do the trick. How will a radio station help the Blood Eagles? Yeah, if the Blood Eagles get a radio station up and running, they can literally broadcast their threats across Appalachia. Everyone who hears the message will either run away or join up to avoid being killed. Know anything about this star person? She joined up about two weeks before I did. She's so amped they didn't even need to juice her up with the buff out to mess with her mind. I once saw her kick a defenseless woman off of a cliff. I mean, who the hell does that? She needs to fall. Hard. So, star needs to die. Got it. Yeah. It's the only way. Want anything before you head out? How's Sage doing? Has he visited lately? Not really. Though I know he'll be back. He always is. He's probably talking to the rocks again. Have you heard back about Edwin's gang? <sighs> no. And it's kind of freaking me out. I was getting regular messages from Ronnie, and suddenly they've stopped. I have a feeling something big is going down over at their camp, but... Uh, we can't worry about that now. I'll be back. You'll be back after these messages, right? That's uh, what I what I heard people used to say all the time. That starts the quest. Shooting star. <sighs> Things will be okay. Okay, let's go shoot star. Uh, let's see, where is that taking us? Okay, just up to the Seneca gang camp. We'll go to the uh, Autumn Acre Cabin, because I don't want to go to Winnego Cave. Okay, so we are getting pretty close here. Seneca Gang Camp we, of course, visited in a surveil video just before the gang lo the <laughs> Wastelanders update launched, so got a pretty good idea of exactly what it looked like before. So let's see uh, how different it is now, along with uh, shooting Star. I wonder if we can actually see Star from here. I wonder if we even have to go inside. 
No blood eagle flare. I think Star is keeping her head below the parapet there. Let's go see. Is that person not living? I've got Barry Mentats and it's showing all these other people. But apparently we've got a member of the undead here. Maybe it's just because they're not hidden. I'm gonna do it. When their backs are turned, I swear. Hello, Star. Okay. Star has been taken care of. All in all, the site doesn't look all that different. They do have this uh, alarm system here, obviously. But generally speaking, this looks pretty much the same as it did before. Okay. Let's get back to Beckett. Well, actually, let's see if Star had any notable loot on her before we uh, head back to I Beckett. I promise I don't want your money. Just your ears. Oh, Gross. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not giving my ears, but uh, let's get back to Beckett. I'm gonna Still pretend alive. that didn't happen. Oh my. All right, let's check back in with Beckett. So, Star's no longer with us, I assume? Good. Well, honestly, I'm really glad you're back. Ronnie is desperate for our help. Turns out Edwin's much sicker than everyone thought, and, well, I don't think he's fit to run their gang any longer. Let's, again, we're gonna flirt because last time I didn't flirt for the first option and it just went straight through. So, Edwin's gang probably needs someone stronger, more courageous. Maybe you should take over his gang. As much as I uh, appreciate the compliment, uh, I think that would be the wrong move. Ronnie deserves to take Edwin's place. How did Edwin get so sick? Uh, I'm not sure. His health has gone downhill since coming to Appalachia. Probably because he insisted on hanging around the ash heap. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's either ash heap or toxic valley. And we care because... Uh, hello? Anyone in there? I don't know how many times I have to explain this. If we want to finish off the Blood Eagles, we need Edwin's gang to help us out. What can we do to help? Well, I was thinking about that. Well, there was a Saddler family that came to Appalachia looking for treasure a while back. And they uh, brought their Miss Nanny with them. They uh, don't need it anymore. And I was thinking maybe Ronnie could use it to help with Edwin. Okay, well, let's see if we can improve our charisma again. Oh, jeez. You think I figured this out by now? Okay, minigun, seven purified water, some electromagnetic cartridges. That completes the quest, shooting star. Let's uh, drink a beer and talk to him again. Okay. Well, well, so there is a heart buried under all that raider bravado. Don't say stuff like that, or I'll be forced to restore my bad reputation by... Kicking a cat or something. <laughs> oh, in all seriousness, uh, Edwin doesn't deserve to go out like that. I mean, he was uh, a buddy, and I want to do everything I can to make amends with the guy. Why doesn't the Settler family neither bot anymore? Because they're all dead. No. Oh. I, uh, I killed them. I killed them all for their chems and a couple of caps. Jeez. It's a memory I wish I could forget. Wow. Is the Miss Nanny still functional? Honestly, I have no idea if it's still working. Or if someone's wandered by and decided to strip it for parts. I'll go get this robot for Edwin, but this better work. If it doesn't, we just have to move on without them. Maybe we can convince Meg to help us? Tell me about this Miss Nanny. Well, I don't know much about the thing. Even though it seemed attached to the family, uh, it didn't try to fight back when I, um, when I killed everyone. You know, when I uh, put it all together, the Miss Nanny, the Kems, the family must have been sick. I murdered sick, innocent people in cold blood. <sighs> well, this is what addiction does to you. You know, how the Blood Eagles strip away your humanity. Now, they need to die. All of them. How do you remember where the settlers were? I remember this place well. Do I deserve the... <sighs> memories replaying in my mind? 
reliving what I did there? Probably. But I gotta forgive myself, too. Not entirely, but... Enough. This won't take long. I'll be back soon. Good. Well, in the meantime, I'll uh, put out some feelers for information on the rest of the Blood Eagle's leadership. Okay, so that starts the quest, Bot of Gold. You really saved me. You know that? Okay, uh, so we've got to go rescue the Miss Nanny robot from Beckett. But that's going to be it for this video, because we just did about four of those, and the recording time just went over an hour. So, this has been the Original Cartographer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.